in this video I will share with you core knowledge when it comes to choosing chest waders. Also in the end of this video I will explain what is my current choice and why. Let's go into the river and start this little video. Before going any further, I have to mention, even though I'm wearing some company waders, this video is not sponsored at all. I paid for those waders and boots and everything out of my own pocket, so please stick around, as this video is not sponsored at all. Anyway, let's move along. Basically, there are three types of waders. You have the choice from, there are rubber ones, but I would not advise to look at those at all. Even though they will be quite hard wearing, mostly seamen do use those waders, but they are not breathable, so you will be sweating, and also the material is quite hard, so to move around whilst wearing those rubber waders will be very, very difficult and uncomfortable. The second type, there are waders which are called neoprene. Basically, those waders are made out of material which is relatively thick, in most cases from like 3 millimeters to 5 millimeters and those waders are quite comfortable to wear actually and they do breathe a little bit but not a lot so on warmer days and, and when you will have to move a little bit more you will be sweating really in those neoprene waders but definitely neoprene ones is a better choice than the first type than the rubber ones and the third type is breathable waders which are made out of flexible and thin material and in my opinion that's the best choice. Obviously those waders will have some problems but I will talk about those problems a little bit la later. But as I say those waders will be breathable so you won't be sweating and also the material is thin so you will be able to move around freely and all the experience of wearing waders will be just much much better. So let's talk very quickly about general facts when it comes to the waders. Basically you will be able to find those ones which are classed as breathable from let's say 50 pounds British pounds to eight nine hundred pounds for like Sims or Patagonia ones which are made out of Gore-Tex material or similar one. So which ones to get? Cheap ones, top ones or something in the middle? Basically, you want to get better two pairs of cheaper waders than one very, very expensive ones. This is because, as I said, if you will get a puncture, it does not matter which ones it will be. Very, very expensive ones like Sims, Patagonia or anything else or cheaper ones. I would say maybe cheaper ones will have a little bit thicker material and it's not likely that you will pierce them or puncture them as easy as those ones which are expensive made out of Gore-Tex and they will be just very thin to make them as comfortable as possible. So, but you will need two pairs at least in any case because you have to look at the waders as you would look at any other item of your clothing like t-shirt, shorts, pants, socks, underwear, what have you. So, waders just might end up being punctured whether you like it or not and if you won't have the spare pair it means that you won't be able to fish until the pair which got punctured for example or just gave up will get repaired or replaced so i'm trying to get across that you need at least two pairs of waders no matter if they will be expensive ones or cheap ones or you can have one expensive ones and then the other pair might be cheaper ones but you will be using the ones which are better and expensive ones and then if they will give up let's say they will get punctured then you will grab the cheaper ones and you will be still fishing so nothing will stop you from fishing if you will have more than one pair of waders so as they say two pairs is a minimum you have to look at the waders as at any 
item of the clothing. All briefable waders will have two key areas which can let you down. So when you will be buying a new pair, you will need to observe and look very closely at those two key areas. First of all, you need to check the seams. Basically all seams must be taped and the quality of, the, of those taped seams must be very, very good. You should imagine that if the tape or the seam will start leaking somewhere, that's it. You will have to send those faders for repairs. So that's the first key area. And the second one will be around the feet. Basically, in most cases, you will be buying waders which will have neoprene, like socks attached to the waders. And that's kind of fragile spot. And also, you must to look for those neoprene socks, which do match your feet size. If you will get ones which will be too small or too big, and once you will put those waders on, let's say with too big neoprene socks, there will be too much like free material or free neoprene in the, in the boot itself. And then it will wrinkle and after a couple of outings, it just will give up and it will like split and it will start leaking. So those are two key areas you need to look at very, very closely when buying a new pair of waders. Also very quickly about types of boots. Waders can come with, basically there are two subtypes if you like. There are ones which will have like a stocking foot or feet where you will have to buy separate pair of boots to put on top of the neoprene socks. There is another type where Wellington boots are just attached onto the waders. Obviously, both types of boots do have their advantages and disadvantages. When it comes to the like neoprene sock waders, the advantage is that those waders will be a little bit more comfortable because you will be able to put on a decent quality wading boots and it will be just a little bit more comfortable. But then you will have to worry about free items. You will have to worry about the waders themselves and a pair of wading boots as well. And when it comes to the ones which have the Wellington boots attached to the waders, those won't be as comfortable, but then you will have one item that is just waders, just in one item, because the boots will be attached onto the waders and not likely that you will forget, for example, sometimes you will be kind of in a rush to get to the river, ready for some bathing action, and there is a possibility that you will forget shoes, for example, and you won't be able to wade with the chest waders, but if everything would be attached, like shoes and waders in one item, not likely that you forget. But yes, that's very quickly about the types of the boots. As you can see, I'm wearing Piskifun waders, but as I said, this video is not sponsored at all. I bought a couple of these pairs myself out of my own pocket, and also a couple of my friends did buy these waders. And I have to say that I'm using this exact pair for probably nine months or so. It's been like used a lot, sometimes a little bit like hammered if you like. And so far I have no complaints. The tapes are very, very nice and neat. And the neoprene socks as well are very, very good quality. The tapes are good and the shape is like ergonomically correct if you like. So when you put a fit into that or into those neoprene socks, kind of, it just goes around beautifully. And for me, that kind of means that those waders will last quite well. And as they are not so expensive, I don't have to like do very big one investment if I would say buy a couple of pairs of Sim, Sims waders, which are like, let's say 800 pounds a pop it would be like 1500s for two pairs and those ones are about 60 pounds per pair so the difference is huge so all in all when buying 
a pair of waders, always better choose two instead of one very expensive. Go somewhere in the middle, what is good quality, but also is a good value, because as I mentioned, it does not make any difference which ones you will puncture quicker, for example, super duper expensive ones or cheaper ones. But it's a bit from me for today. I hope you'll find this video useful. Also, I will leave links below for the waders. I have found do work very well for me, those Piskifan ones. So if you are interested, please check them out. But that's it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.